Hi, welcome to the latest video. Today we're going to be changing the auxiliary drive belt and tensioner pulley on a Land Rover Freelander 2. This is the 2.2-litre uh, diesel TD4 engine. There's the belt here, and further down out of sight in the darkness down there is a tensioner pulley, you can just about see it. This vehicle's done about 106,000 miles. Whilst the belt actually looks in, in reasonably good condition, it's starting to get a little bit noisy especially on cold mornings when there's a bit of moisture on the belt and the pulleys uh, it's getting a bit bit, uh, bit of noise the odd sort of um, rattly squealy noises coming from that and the tension is also uh, shaking about quite a lot it is meant to move slightly because it's sprung loaded but uh, this one I think is due for, for a change it's always best to change the tensioner at the same time as the belt Loosen the wheel nuts, jacked the front right hand side of the car up, supported it on an axle stand, removed the wheel, pop the, uh, the wheel just as an extra safety measure just underneath the car, and uh, now we can get in there, remove the inner wheel arch liner. Before I do that, just have a quick look at the parts that we're going to be fitting. So there's a new belt, this is a Deco, Deco belt, other brands are available, Gates, uh, etc. Um, Deco, pretty sure is the same as the belt that's already on the car, so we'll fit that one. I'm sure when I bought it, it was bought as a genuine Land Rover part. Uh, SKF are a uh, well-known bearing manufacturer, and they make this, which is the tensioner pulley. Again, there are other makes available, other brands available. SKF are uh, perfectly good quality. Uh, now, you'll notice that this comes with this pin. There's a very, very strong spring inside here. You can just see uh, the edge of it there, give you an idea of the size of the spring. It's a really big, chunky steel spring round in a loop inside there. Whatever you do, don't remove that pin until the pulley is fitted on the car because that, that is holding the tension in the spring. It allows you to fit this with the belt, belt loose and then you very carefully uh, just take up the strain using a spanner and carefully, carefully pull out that pin and then the, the pulley will go with the spring pushing against the, the new belt uh, to give it the correct tension. So it's very, very important not to pull that out before you fit it. Okay, right, so now we're going to remove that inner wheel arch liner. But to remove that, there are a couple of little nuts up here. Some of these nuts, I think these two are, are actually plastic nuts, not metal. Um, they, they don't seem to thread very well onto the metal stud sticking out, so it's a case of just loosening them off and sometimes they just need pulling off with pliers. We've got uh, one nut there, another there, and that, I think, is it. That, that should be sufficient to pull that away. There are extra screws at the bottom here, which, which I've got these, these spats fitted. I uh, might need to undo a couple of those screws to allow this to pull out completely, but we'll see. I might be able to just tuck it down underneath. So I'm going to have a go at that now and see how we get on with that. Okay, so I've removed the inner wing shield, the wheel arch liner. With these two nuts here, that one there and that one there, they were plastic. They are uh, uh, just just plastic, black plastic nuts, uh, 10 millimeter socket or spanner. Uh, they, they sort of undid and then a, they, the thread tends to rip on these, so it's a case of just undo them as best you can and then just pull them off. The, uh, the studs themselves are metal, a little bit rusty, so I'll put a bit of, uh, bit of oil or WD-40 or something on those and then I reassemble. I did need, in the end, to remove those two screws there from the, uh, from the front, lower front of the car where I've got these spats attached. That allows the shield to then be removed completely. 
and then we can actually get in and get access to the various pulleys. So this one here is the crank pulley, the engine turns that, you've got the air conditioning compressor with its, with its clutch, uh, clutch arrangement, electronic clutch which uh, engages or disengages as required to the air conditioning, idler pulley, tensioner pulley which we're going to change and then further up the alternator and the power steering pump right up the top. There, just see the alternator pulley there, that one with the sort of plain end on it and then right at the top is the power steering. Okay, so what we're going to do now is try to take up the tension on that tensioner enough to allow me to slip the belt carefully off. Right, let's have a go at that. Just trying to get a 15 millimeter spanner, it's a 15 mil spanner onto this tensioner. Now, you can see it moves very slightly, very slightly, but it's incredibly strong, that spring. That's not going to be enough, to, enough movement to get that belt off. I don't want to cut the belt because it's worth carrying as a spare. There's still some life left in this belt. And also, just in case there's an issue with the new belt, like it's too long or too tight or snaps within a few days of putting it on, I want to keep the old belt intact just as, as an emergency backup, just in case I have to put it back on at some point. So what I'm gonna try and do now is get a, a socket, a 15 millimeter socket with a longer bar in order to rotate that pulley against the spring enough to get the belt off. Let me try that. I've put my very long breaker bar, it's about, I think it's an 18 inch breaker bar, which I use for my wheel nuts. I've put that on with a 15 mil spanner and now you can see there's enough movement in there against the spring to, uh, to get that belt off. Okay, so I've just pulled that across by using a breaker bar to very carefully turn this nut clockwise, which pulls the pulley across against the spring, and then I've slipped the belt off this smooth idler pulley here. Okay, so here's the belt, completely loose now. Let's go up the top, see if we can lift that out. We can inspect it. Okay. A bit fiddly getting that out. Right, there we go. Okay. There's the old belt. It actually looks in pretty good condition for 106,000 miles. There's a bit of perishing in the grooves, but as far as wear is concerned, it's actually pretty good. I think this would go on for probably another 30, 40,000 miles. Uh, so I will keep that as a emergency spare, just in case the belt ever fails again in the future. It's pretty lightweight, so it can just Pull that up, stick that in the boot, put it under the boot floor and keep that uh, as a spare. Now, looking down from the top, you can see we've got the power steering pump. So what I'm doing is pulling these, these pulleys around to see if there's any play at all in their bearings. Power steering seems fine. Let's reach down and let's see if we can grab the alternator. That seems solid as well. So often the alternator bearings can fail because that's quite a small pulley, it runs at high speed. Um, the bearings, are, also with the alternator being quite open to the elements with all these uh, vents on it, it often gets water and mud and dust getting in there. Let's see, and those bearings can fail. I've had that before on other cars a few times. I'm just looking underneath here, let's feel the right, idler pulley seems nice and solid, no noise in the bearings and spinning that. And the air conditioning, now this is a weird one because it's got a strange clutch arrangement so doing that is actually turning the air conditioning compressor but not the pulley. You see the pulley actually actually runs separate and inside here there's an electromagnetic uh, coil with a, a clutch plate which the coil um, attracts a magnet basically 
electromagnet uh, locks the clutch plates together and starts to turn turn the compressor as well as the pulley. The pulley's always turning when the engine's running. So often this pulley here just free wheels. Now there is a little bit of movement in that. A little bit of movement, but I think I think that's okay. That's there there will be a small amount of movement because because of this two-part clutch arrangement. There's a little tiny bit of movement. So that's something that's a job for the future is to take this nut, this bolt here out, pull all that off, and you can actually get a aircon clutch refurb kit with um, new bearings, new clutch plates, etc. So I think it's alright for now, um, but uh, I'll keep my eye on that. And then this one, I hope, is solid. That's the, that's the actual crank bully, which it is. So, um, so now we need to try to remove this old tensioner which uh, doesn't seem to have any play in its bearings, but it was, I think it was losing its springiness. It was bouncing about quite a lot, causing slack in the, in the, uh, in the belt and noise. So um, I'm gonna try to remove that. Now to remove that up here, there's a big Torx bolt, one big Torx bolt, and there's a, a, a sort of peg, dog tooth kind of thing on the back of this, which locks it into position. I just need to remove that big Torx there. So I'll give it a spray with some WD-40 and I'll get my big Torx, uh, Torx bits out on my ratchet uh, and we'll try and undo that. Okay, working up from underneath, you need a TX-50, a Torx-50, big chunky one, bit in a ratchet, get in there. And then you can slowly start to undo that. Undo that big Torx head bolt in the middle of the uh, tensioner. Let's undo that. And the whole thing should then come away. Just one bolt in the middle that holds it in place. Right, here we go. There you go. Keep that because we need that for the new one. Okay, there's the old tensioner. You see this, this peg in the back is what stops it rotating. Um, yeah. Doesn't look too bad. There's, there's not really any play in the bearings. The bearings inside here, um, but uh, yeah, it was getting a bit noisy. It's always worth changing this at the same time as the belt, it's very easy to do. Fitted the new tensioner into position, making sure that the peg on the back locates into the hole and this torque bolt in the middle. I'll do that up and then I'm going to get the socket on that to tighten that up properly. Now I haven't put the belt on yet and that's because we need to fit this first with the pin still located, don't remove the pin. So this pulley has been held up out of the way against the spring. So we now put the belt round and then we're very, very carefully, we won't just pull that pin out, we'll just take up the tension on this uh, in order to allow us to easily pull out the pin and let it slowly take up the tension on the belt. Okay, so now I'm gonna tighten that up with the, with the socket, with the ratchet, and then we'll put the, belt, the new belt. The easiest way to do that is to push it down from above, get it located onto the power steering pulley correctly, and then we'll look in the wheel arch and see how this actually goes. It's worth making a little sketch or taking some photographs of how the belt goes, uh, just so you can remember how to route it around all these pulleys when you put the new one on. So if, uh, if you don't know, it comes down from the power steering pulley round the tensioner, round here, round the uh, crank pulley, round power steering, up to the alternator, back down around the idler and then back up to the power steering at the top. Fiddly getting this belt located, um, what I found is that uh, every time I got it round the pulleys at the bottom it would come off the pulley at the top. 
So uh, a little technique that I've, uh, I've found here, uh, either get an assistant to hold the belt on the pulley at the top, stop it coming off, or assemble it going on the wrong side of the tensioner pulley. Okay, so it goes round, round there, up, round the alternator, round there and up. That gives you enough slack to just get it all into position. Then you can reach in and pull that carefully to the right side. There, it's very tight. And that's even that's without the sprung release, spring released on the tensioner. So that's in now, located correctly on all the pulleys, alternator, and hopefully up the top it's still located onto the power steering pulley. Yes it is, which is good. I kept on hopping off this one whenever I move the belt lower down. So what we now need to do is release the spring tension in the tensioner here. Um, rather than just pulling that pen out, I'm just going to take up uh, the tension by turning this carefully anti-clockwise, very slightly with the with the, uh, the socket on the end of the breaker bar just to take the, the, the tension up on that spring, pull out the pin and hopefully that should then release that and it should then sit at the correct tension. We'll start the engine see what happens. Okay, I've just used the socket on the end of the long bar just to take up the tension on that and then that pin pulls out and then very, very carefully release the pressure on your on the socket and the bar to allow that to push back. That belt's now very tight. Okay, so there's the new belt, all fitted correctly. So I'm going to start the engine now and just uh, see if it sounds okay, see if it runs okay. Now, make sure it's in neutral, and break on. Okay, well, instantly I noticed that that's a lot quieter than it used to be. running fine, it's a lot quieter, none of those catchy rattly noises or squeaky noises come from the belt and the pulley, so that looks good. Right now I just need to refit that wheel arch liner and let the card out and off the jack, put the wheel back on, let that down and uh, all done, job done, good, thank you for watching, hope that was useful.